Let me ask you directly. But I want to say something about what Queen Radia said. The whole idea about like the West. I think that in three weeks, Israel morally corrupted the West like no other. I think the West will have a lot of time to recover because for years, the West has been telling us, oh look, we're liberal. We're all about human rights. All are equal. Adopt our values. And then suddenly, well, you, you don't want to even to cease, we don't want to even tell Israel to stop. And suddenly we wake up and we find McDonald's are giving free meals to the Israeli because nothing will make you feel better after killing a bunch of okay, Palestinian okay. kids than a happy meal. So let me ask you They this. have a toy. So, so this brings me to Hamas. What Israel will say, because they say it to me every time they come on the program, whoever from Mehu Barak to Natalie Bennett, whoever it may be. They say, look, we suffered such a catastrophic terror attack on October the 7th that we have decided we are going to get rid of Hamas. There are 40,000 or so Hamas terrorists in their eyes who need to be got rid of. And I do believe they're terrorists. Only terrorists can commit the kind of act of terrorism we saw. Can we, on that point, can we agree on that? Do you believe Hamas is a terror group? It is, it is classified by America. As a, I, I'm not a big fan of Hamas, and they're a militant group that does like stuff like... Are they terrorists, do you think? Cool. We agree on this. Mm -hmm. You have 40,000 of them living in Gaza amongst the civilian population. If Israel has decided to eliminate a terror group, Hamas, as the world did with ISIS, for example, and I think there are a lot of parallels given the way they behaved on October the 7th to ISIS, how do you do it? How do you do it if you don't do it the way Israel is currently trying to do it? Exactly not the way that Israel does it, because if you have the, one of the most advanced military powers in the world, and it takes you three weeks 9,000 Palestinian civilian death, 21,000 injured. As we are talking right now, Israel just bombed, which is a known refugee camp. This, it is a very, this is, a, this is not self-defense. Like one of the most questions, does Israel have the right to defend itself? This is a no-value question. This is a no-value question. Well, I would ask a different point. I would say, not only do they have a right to defend themselves, which every country would, a terror attack, right? But they actually have a duty and responsibility to their population to try and stop that happening again to them. They've been doing... And I do, I do understand and I agree with that. But, but here's the thing. If it takes you all of that time, all of these civilians, to take out a few hundred guerrilla fighters. We don't know how many of the people A few died. thousand. We don't know. It do doesn't we? matter. Yeah, but that's but, you don't know and I don't know. We don't know. But right? We don't even know if the casualty numbers are correct because they're all coming from Hamas. And we, the should, health authority, and, and we should believe Israel? No, no, not necessarily, no. No, I, I don't believe either side. But, but, but here's my problem but, with but Israel. But here's my point. I don't think we should assume that we know these statistics okay. are correct. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should assume we know exactly how many children are being killed. We do know a lot have been killed. So the moral argument remains the same. But we don't know how many Hamas terrorists have been killed in the last three weeks. We just don't know, do we? So basically, we're, te we're dealing with a very incompetent military force that has been sucking America dry for years, and then they cannot do the job. But how else do they get rid of Hamas? Not like that. How do they do it? I don't know, but not like that, because they've been trying the same... you've got to have another... They have, uh, first of all, I'm not a military expert. Second of no, all, understand. Second of all, they've been trying the same thing for years. Mm. They go in... They go, this is not an eye for an eye anymore. This is an eye, a limp, a life, a house, a neighborhood, a whole population sit, for an eye. That but they is, don't sit. I mean, your, your friend Ben Shapiro that you particularly despise. Oh, he, I love Ben Shapiro. He's yeah. very smart. Oh, yeah, but you've, you've been very critical. That's fair enough. I'm sure he would be of you. But when I asked him about proportion, he said, there is, I don't care about a, a proportionate response. Let's right? kill civilians as... Hamas did gun. this. We are going to get rid yeah, of Hamas. But, but, but he, it's not, it's not, in his eyes, it wasn't eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. It was this group of terrorists did this, and we are now going to rid the world of these terrorists. And this is very important to look at things in context. When you see how Israelis talk inside their community. Mm -hmm. There was a very famous post by Uri uh, Eritzol. He is the uh, speechwriter of uh, Netanyahu. He said, what is so horrific about understanding that the whole Palestinian people are our enemies? All of them are enemy combatants. We should call them, kill their mother destroy their homes, the homes that they raised, those snakes, so no snakes will be raised in this house anymore. And this was reposted by Ali Chaket, which is the minister of, wait for it, justice. Mm -hmm. Those, this, it's not about Hamas anymore. It is not about Hamas. They, they can tell you it's about Hamas, but it's not about Hamas. It is basically, it has, they have said it many times, Pierce, 
This is a way to kind of push them into Sinai. This is not about eradicating Hamas. This ship has sailed. I am sorry, but anybody who still believes that this is about Hamas is stupid. Because you they... See, I, I don't agree with that. Really? No, because I think... But why, so why are you... Why they're, I, I tell you what, I don't agree. There are like 100 people... I think any Gaza country, and any West country Bank. that suffered the kind of terror attack that Israel suffered with the kind of death toll that occurred that day, 1,500 plus people, grandmothers, kids, young women being raped, kidnapped, beheaded, it's been reported, and so on. Well, you can raise an eyebrow. They found a, they found a young woman's skull. Right? Somehow but I, but been, what about the, somehow been but what about the babies that were beheaded? Well, there was a report, and you and I had this discussion on air. You falsely quoted me, and I wanted to clarify that with yeah. you in person. You thought I'd said that 40 babies had been beheaded. So what did you say? I never said that. What did you say? I said it's been reported that 40 babies were killed, some of whom had been beheaded. That's what I said. Yeah. It's totally a, different. Yeah. It's a very different... Well, it is different. Yes. Do you, do you accept it? Um, English as a second language. But they're different might, things. Of course, yes. Between sure. saying 40 babies have been beheaded and 40 babies have been reported to have been killed, including so some where are those beheaded who were beheaded. Babies? Well, apparently, journalists are being shown utterly okay. horrific. Oh, this, is, this comes to a very important question about credibility. Again, I'm not condoning what mm. happened in October 7th, but in, I'm not a journalist. Mm. But as a journalist, wouldn't you take anything that an authority would say with a grain of thought? Yes. Especially if this authority have a long history of lying. And I'm just going to give a few examples. 1996, they bombed Kana. It's a refugee camp. They killed 106 people. Uh, despite that they knew it's a refugee camp. They said, oh, maybe it's a one time off. 2006, they bombed Kana again. 2014, they killed two teenagers at a checkpoint. They denied, as usual, but CNN was there. So they said, mm, we have to say it. 2018, they killed a medic, a Palestinian medic, and they doctored, they fabricated a video showing that it's someone else, that he was a human shield. And then I they... Would say now, now, can, can, can I just, like, finish yeah, that? Yeah, but I do want to respond. And, the, and then 2010, they killed Ahmed Oraikat, mm. denied it, then said, oh, it's OK, it's mm. us. 2021, they bombed the media office in Hawass. Mm. It's not us, but no, I'm sorry. And then, 11th May, 2022, mm. Shirin Abu mm. a reporter, your colleague, she's Palestinian, American citizen, she was shot in the head. And they provided forensic evidence and even a doctor's video mm. that it was not them, it was Islamic Jihad. How can I expect to believe this regime, especially if the president of Israel comes down with this ridiculous, ridiculous thing? Have you seen in there? there? No. He said, this was reported by Sky News, mm. and it was the funniest thing I've seen so much. This was a Colin Powell moment, mm. but like the cheap edition. Mr. Uh, Herzog said, like, Isaac Herzog, it's like, we have found evidence on one of the uh, terrorists, a manual to create chemical bombs. Mm. And then he showed this, <laughs> and he showed... Uh, this is, so I, I just want to say, why would a foot shoulder go in into any that with, like, a manual to uh, chemical bombing? It's like, is that BYOB, bring your own beer, a uh, bomb? It's, like, it's, it's crazy. And, and uh, what, 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 what he, like, have, like, local ingredients to make... A, and then... This is, this is a manual of Al-Qaeda, of course, convenient to sit in Qaeda. And let me read it to you in Arabic because this is funny. This is basically like a catalog for self-improvement for Mujer. <laughs> I didn't know that they have life coaches. This, and you know what Sky News said? It's like, we cannot confirm or uh, any of this, but we will show it anyway. Let and me they respond. So this, is like a, Let me a, respond. this is a lying government. Let me respond. I yes. do think the Israeli government has lied. All the time. Right? I do think they've lied. I'm not going to dispute that. I do think they've been caught lying. I do think they've said things that turned out not to be true. I also think that two weeks ago, a hospital was bombed. Yes. And it was immediately... Who do you think did it? Well, I'm going to tell you what I think. Mm -hmm. Hamas immediately tell the world it was an Israeli airstrike and that 500 people were killed and that the hospital had been destroyed. And then as the next couple of days go by, the hospital is relatively undamaged car park was obliterated. Many fewer people than 500 were killed. How many people died? We don't know. Because mm. actually we're reliant on the Palestinian health authority, which is mm. Hamas in Gaza, for the figures. So we don't know the number. But a lot fewer people died, it would appear, than the like 500. 100? We don't know. 50? Either way, it's appalling. But it may not have been anywhere near as appalling as was first said by Hamas. But here's the point. Most independent studies of what happened have concluded that it was almost certainly a militant stroke terror group inside Gaza, and they fired a rocket which landed 
in the hospital car park. In other words, it wasn't an Israeli airstrike. I have an issue with that. Mm. Because for three days before the attack, the priest and the patriarch of the hospital, because it's called the, pa the Baptist mm. Hospital, said that they have received warning, multiple warning from Israel that they're going to mm -hmm. hit the hospital. Mm -hmm. And then at the time of the hit of the hospital, one of the top aides of Netanyahu, he tweeted about, like, we hit the hospital. And then he deleted it. And then basically, Israel gas lighted the world. Oh, but no, that's not true. The New York Times actually, like, just published something to prove that it was shot from Israel. And the thing is, no, okay, they didn't, though. Okay, numbers. They didn't. Numbers. Bassam, that's not true. Okay. The New York Times has not reported that it was Israel. No, they said the. They haven't. Okay. That's not true. Over 10 years, Hamas launched 35,000 rockets into Israel. They and many failed. They killed 69 people mm. and 25% uh, military, only part of them were civilians. So over 10 years of 35,000 rockets, they killed 69 people. But in one strike, you want to tell me that these glorified firecrackers caused that kind of damage. Yes, it looks like they did, yeah. Okay. And it wasn't the damage that was reported by Hamas, okay. who wanted people to believe it was an Israeli airstrike. Right. So my point would be, I'm happy to concede that Israel government has lied about stuff over mm -hmm. the years, but I'm absolutely certain as well that Hamas lie all the time. Why are we holding a militant... Including, I believe, why from all we, I've read, I believe they lied about the hospital. Why are we holding the militant terrorist group to the same standards as the because they democracy happen to be in the Middle the, East? they happen to be the ruling party in Gaza. So they're not just a terror group, they are a political group as well, okay. a political party. Um, okay. Well, they are. Mm -hmm. The question again comes this, and, and so far you've ducked it, so I want to ask you one more time. We can both agree that the scenes in Gaza right now are horrific, because I do feel that. But I don't know how else Israel can eradicate Hamas than the way that they're currently trying to do it. Do you have an alternative for them? Well, again... We are locked in the same thing, what can we do now? But we don't look at what was happening over there. You, the best recruiter for Hamas is Israel. I mean, you have talked a lot about the horrible conditions in Gaza. Yeah. I mean, let's imagine like a little boy called Rami. He lives in Gaza. You know, he have a horrible life, but like, you know, it's like, it's not that bad. I know he has a cousin in the West Bank. He's living a good life. He wake up in the morning. And he found out that he was kidnapped by three settlers. He was burned alive by kerosene, and he was forced to drink the kerosene. His name was Muhammad Abu Khudira. That Settlers did that to him in 2016. said, so, all right, you know what? I'm just going to leave. I'm going to find a way to go to Europe. His aunt is an, a published author, and she won a prize in the Frankfurt Book Fair. His name is Adnaya Shalab. And now she was canceled because of what's happened, just because of her a Palestinian. His other aunt. In America, his name Bahia, she is a speech therapist, and I, this is close to my heart because of my son. Mm -hmm. And she was fired because she did not want to sign the co for government con that said that you cannot join BDS, which I don't understand why do people choosing to protest peacefully by not buying goods from a certain country, why would the United States make that its own issue? Mm -hmm. So, and this guy, this, uh, this Rami is being approached by, by like, oh, join Hamas, join us, let's go kill Israel. No, 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 no I don't want to kill. I'll just go. I'm going to live in Gaza. It's a life. But 97% of water is not good for human consumption. Half of the population are anemic. Even the <laughs> is not being treated. And it goes into the shores of Israel. It's like, oh, that was All of which is horrendous. It's horrible. Yeah. So, and then he, and he wakes up in the morning. He doesn't think about killing Jews the first thing in the morning. He thinks about being there at 5 o'clock at the first 50 people in the line for bread. Because yeah. if he doesn't, he will miss the food for his family. And he goes back. And he finds a message saying that we are going to bomb your house. He comes back, he loses his old family. Now tell me, what is a proportionate response for that? I don't know. I don't know. You cannot create terrorism and then you... Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, you have, they, they have created but this. You, I, don't, I don't know is the answer. But Bassam, let me ask you this. Hamas will have known when they perpetrated what they did on October the 7th, what the scale of response was likely to be. How does that help the Palestinian people? I don't know. That they are supposed to serve. I don't know. The, 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 the wheels are it, already it, set in it, motion. But it doesn't, does it? I do not. You know, <laughs> I feel sometimes that Hamas is with us in the room. That we, we are bringing Hamas. Who has the power in this equation? Who has the fourth largest and strongest military power? Mm. The whole idea about Israel is like, oh my God, we are there. The Arabs are going to destroy us. Look at the map. Hamas, because, well, hang on, hang, let me, let, hang on. Hamas's stated goal 
is the eradication yeah. of Israel and the Jewish people. Yes. They make no pretense about it. They've made no attempt, unlike the Nazis Absolutely. who try to cover up their crimes. Absolutely. They've made no attempt to yes. try and deny what they They brazenly boasted about it. Yes. They are proud of what they did. Mm -hmm. right? And they will have known again that the scale of what they did on October the 7th would have prompted this kind of response, which would have led to thousands of innocent Palestinians getting killed. And my question for you... I wish the 7th of October never happened. Right, but my... Every time, but every my question time is, something happened. You say happened. Well, Hamas is everywhere. Well, yeah, it, actually, all roads, yes, but, but, all but, roads on this but, particular okay. part of the crisis, and I accept it's been going on for 75 years, this conflict, but all roads in this crisis lead to Hamas and what they did. And, all, they? and all, not necessarily... Because, well, because yes. all roads goes to the condition that created Hamas. If the, if the Jewish people were expelled from Europe and went to Argentina or South Africa and Uganda and went in and took the land, you would have Hamas in all but of these places. You and I can agree that the conditions Palestinian people have had to endure in Gaza for a very long time are completely unacceptable. I think it's completely unacceptable yes. that Israel has wielded such control over the people of Gaza, working out who can come in and who can go out, turning on and off water and power on a whim, turning off the internet on and off at a whim, all that kind of stuff I can completely agree with. But given that I think we agree Hamas are a terror group... Okay, let's say... Well, okay. Let me finish my question. Mm -hmm. Given that we agree that Hamas is a terror mm -hmm. organisation mm -hmm. who have a publicly stated position of annihilating not just Israel but Jewish people, mm -hmm. and as we saw on October the 7th, they mean it, if you are Israel, what do you do to get rid of those people who have shown the world that's exactly what they will actually do if they get the chance? You know what I would do? I would give the Palestinians what they deserve. Terrorism is a virus. Yes. It's a virus. I agree. If a patient with a flu came to you and you're a doctor, mm. how can you treat that patient? How do you treat as a doctor? How do you do? Well, you're the doctor. You give them nutrition, yeah. fluids, yeah. and rest. So the immunity of the body gets rid of the virus on its own. Mm -hmm. If I received that patient with a flu and I took a sledgehammer, it's like, why are you not getting better? Do you think that patient will get better? No. You are weakening him. You are making him worse. Israel did not just like weaken the body of Palestinians, making them unable to get rid of hate and radicalism. They have openly bolstered about helping and giving money to the same terrorist organization. Mm. So. I agree. I think Netanyahu is complicit in keeping Hamas in power because it suited him politically. Yes. And I think you can't get away from that. Yes. Uh, there's no question of that. But there's also no question that the Israeli government, led currently by him, has to stop Hamas from perpetrating another terror attack. And again, it comes down to this question. What do they do to get rid of Hamas? if it's not what they're doing. I don't know. But like, as an Israeli citizen listening to this, how come that my prime minister mm. bragging about giving money mm. to the terrorist group that he is using right now to eradicate a whole group of people and yet using them as an excuse? Isn't that weird? This is like, yeah, basic, this is like Tony Blair yeah. being like found like giving money to Al-Qaeda or yeah. ISIS and then going to fight them. How does this work? Yeah. How does this work? I agree. How does this work? Yeah, but that's so, I agree with so, you. So yeah, it's a terrorist attack. And Israel is funding them? I mean, this is, the, this is in the words of Benjamin. He is, this is the thing about Benjamin now. He brags about that stuff. Mm. So this is a circular question. Yeah, but yes, I agree, I Israel, agree with Hamas is to blame. Who created Hamas? Who's helping them? And who is allowing for an environment for that kind of hate and, 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 and destruction of Jewish people to, to, to aspire? And the thing is, there's something very important to the Western audience here. They think that Israel is a small, tiny country between the hostile Arab countries. Mm -hmm. The biggest military power in the, in the Arab world is Egypt. They have a peace treaty. Mm -hmm. Their neighbors, Jordan, they have a peace treaty. Saudi Arabia, Emirates, either like have like full relationship or like on the way of normalization. Yeah. The only people that, even Syria, Syria is not like even like mm -hmm. they did launch like a single bullet. Mm -hmm. The only two crutches that, 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 that Israel has is like Hezbollah, and Hamas, yeah. a few militant, thousands of militants. Sir, is that really formed an existential like threat, especially if I know that over 13 years, only not, not 69 Israelis were I killed? I would say, I would say... Is that an, is that, well, that, would that really wipe out Israel? Is, that, is Israel that weak? I think if you have two groups of people who are ideologically wedded to your destru destruction as a state and as a populace, <laughs> and you're constantly firing rockets, as Hamas have done for over a decade now, mm -hmm. then that cannot be acceptable. 
you have to stop that. Right? These are terrorists who've now shown on October the 7th their true colors. They don't just talk about wanting to kill all Jewish people. They are going to do it if they get the chance. So I don't believe Hamas can possibly stay in any position of authority in Gaza. I think that would be ruinous for not just the people of Gaza, but also for Israelis. So if you're going to get rid of them, which many people think on both sides is inevitable and should happen as a consequence of what they did, the big question is, how do you do that? And I don't know any other way yeah. other than the way Israel is currently doing. Hence my personal moral quandary about this. So if a terrorist takes over the Empire State, instead of taking him out, we bomb the whole Empire State? Well, that's the question, isn't it? Proportion. That is not even a question. Well, <laughs> that was not even a question no, because that would be ridiculous. You talk about, you talk about the normalization of the region. I mean, the theory that I most buy into, supported by recent, I think, Wall Street Journal reporting, that hundreds of Hamas terrorists had gone to Iran for training before this attack. Okay. It had obviously been very carefully organized, and so that is, I think, highly likely. But if you're Iran, and you're looking at all this normalization, and you're looking at Saudi Arabia being next, this is your worst nightmare. So a perfect time to commit an atrocity like this through your proxy of Hamas. Again, I'm not a, a political expert to know no. what is the background, but let me tell it's you. It's a likely theory. Is, is Hamas justified? Is all of the horrible conditions that Palestinians no. are living in, is that a justification for Hamas doing what they did in October no. 7th? Good. Do you think so? Of course not. Right. So we're agreed. No, of course. So let me ask you the question a different way. There is no justification what Israel is doing now. No Hamas, no terrorist attack justifies this. Well, because you have been there. No, but that's you the, have been there. You yeah. have stood against the Iraq war. Yes. And that is too much. Yeah, but here's the difference. You are killing a whole population. No, here's the difference. I didn't stand against them for that reason. Mm -hmm. I stood against the Iraq war because I did not believe we had seen evidence that Saddam Hussein had okay. weapons of mass destruction. Uh -huh. So we were fighting a war against a country and a despotic leader which had nothing to do with 9-11, as they were trying to claim. It was actually a lie perpetrated on the world and the consequences were disastrous. A million people died. I mean, over 150 British troops died. My brother served in Iraq and could have been one of them. You know, the whole thing was a fiasco, a deadly fiasco. It led to the rise of ISIS and all the hell that came with that. So, you know, I, yes, absolutely, I fought that campaign against that war and I wish I'd been successful. But the singular difference here is no one is disputing, least of all the Hamas themselves, that they perpetrated this attack. And I believe Israel has a fundamental right and a duty to defend its people from them doing it again. So if we can agree on that as a principle of a country that's had that kind of attack and how you deal with it, the question then becomes, how do you eradicate the people who did it? And I just think given the intense nature of the way the population exists in Gaza, very, very large numbers of people in confined places, and that is in itself unacceptable and I will agree with you about all of that and that has to be fixed longer term but actually if Hamas are everywhere there amongst these people I just don't see any alternative hmm. to what they're doing and I'm very happy to consider one but so, I don't think you have one either so so if if the Iraqis were actually there was evidence that they were behind 9-11 would that still be okay to kill well, a million we Iraqis? have a parallel which is Afghanistan and in fact I would say but th that raises a different question so uh, was the Afghanistan war just? I believe it was in a way that Iraq wasn't. I believe that Afghanistan was harboring terrorists, Al-Qaeda. We know that they were training there. We know the Taliban were, were there. And we went in, we launched this war. It goes on and on and on. Huge bloodshed on both sides. And in the end, after a ridiculous overnight pullout by America and President Biden, the Taliban are back in charge and wave, waging the same kind of medieval rule they waged before all this. So you, you've got two things. Was it justified to strike back at Afghanistan for harboring al-Qaeda? I would say yes. Was the, did the means in the end justify the war? You could argue no, actually, because actually you ended up with the Taliban back in charge. So they're two different things. And it may well be here, by the way, as I've said, that if Israel pursues this ground invasion, it backfires horribly it leads to a much wider conflict involving many other people, possibly including Iran directly. And it could be a horrendous escalation and a massive war raging through the whole region. And that is my fear about it. But I come back to the central point of justification and I'm really struggling to see 
what else Israel is supposed to do to get rid of Hamas. And if you've got an alternative, let's hear it. I do. Pierce, this is never about Hamas. Believe me, it is never about Hamas. If somebody tells you who they are, listen. Israel has been telling the world all the time they need to clear the Gaza Strip into Egypt. You think that's always been the plan? Always there. I mean, they have said it. They have said it many times. Why does, why does Egypt take them? And do you think when Egypt takes them, do you think they'll go back? No, never. And then when they're done with Gaza, they will go back to the West Bank. They will kind of like build the settlements around them and then until they push them into Jordan, because that is the plan. They have talked, not just Benjamin Netanyahu, everybody said like, there's no state, two states. It is one state and it's for the Jews. I don't people. think he believes in a two state solution. Nobody really believes in a two state solution. It is one state. But nor do Hamas, obviously. And they're the ruling authority in Gaza. They, they don't. You see what you're comparing? It's a militant group. Mm. It's a small militant group. But they are, but they are Israel, the group. Oh, on, Israel as a nation... They as, are the elected political leadership. They were of, elected in 2006, and 50% of the people in Gaza right now are under the age of 16. They were not even born. I understand. Yeah, like, so, I understand. And, and the so, thing, all right. So, so, let's, all right. Let, let's agree about that. But that's the circle city. It's, I Hamas, understand. It's Hamas, a circular fire Hamas, squad. Hamas, 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 I know. Hamas, Hamas. I know. I know. But, okay, let's, let's move forward. Oh, yeah. let's, let's assume, somehow, we get to a place possibly at the instigation of countries like Saudi Arabia and others getting directly involved, where you get to a place where Hamas are removed, and I don't quite see how that happens without enormous further bloodshed, but let's assume they get removed. Let's assume that Netanyahu is removed from office, which I think is highly likely just from the fury of his own people about what they see as the defensive and security failings, plus his attack on the Supreme Court already causing huge polarization. Let's assume we get new leadership in both places could there still be peace could there still no. be a two-state no. solution no it can never happen no because israel have already shown it's it's not about netanyahu mm. it is the policy of israel not to give the palestinians their city it has always been there but what if you find leadership that understands you will not but why, you, why, why are you so, you will not beca why, why because do you not think so? because israel has been you know but they would say the same about the other side and I remember... Who has the power? Let, let, me, let, me, let me give you a parallel. Obama you, in his book. Let me give you a parallel. He, okay. Let me give you a parallel. Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland appeared to be completely intractable with the IRA and the loyalist paramilitaries trying to kill each other. In the IRA's case, trying to kill uh, British people as well uh, because they, they did not want this to go the way that people wanted it to go. And ultimately, we got to peace because we found leaders who actually had the courage, the moral courage, to get in the room with the people that were trying to kill them and to do a deal. I don't think you can do that with Hamas. They're on a different scale altogether to the IRA. But we did have a seemingly intractable place riddled with violence okay. on both sides. And eventually, we got peace. Do you not see there's any chance of doing that? Here? No, not with Israel. Obama, after he left office, he wrote in his book, the problem with the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is that that one side is extremely powerful and one side is extremely weak. There is absolutely nothing to oblige that strong side to give anything. All over the years, Israel showed you many times that they are not interested in peace. Leave Gaza, forget Hamas for a second, the West Bank. What have they been doing in the West Bank? The illegal settlements did not stop a single day. No, they no. Are and, and, it's, and it's completely wrong. Yeah, 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 but, but, but the thing but is- it's wrong, what I agree the, with you. But you see what they're doing in the West Bank right mm. now? They are creating little Gazas. Mm. They are creating little Gazas. Yeah. And I, until they are like squeeze them. There was, there and is, it's completely wrong. There Russia. is a hilarious documentary called The Wanted 18. Mm. It is like an Israeli uh, Palestinian uh, co production. And it tells about the incredible story about the residents of Beit Sahur. It's a Palestinian town next to the Na Nazareth. And uh, they said they don't want to depend on the milk coming from the kaputs. Mm. So they bought 18 cows. 18 cows. And they didn't know how to milk the cows or have a cow farm. So, so they were like engineers and, and, and doctors. So they sent people to kind of like to learn how to do the farm. So they bought the cows and they started to produce milk and they started to sell the milk to the villages. The Israeli authorities were not very comfortable. So one day the military government came in and said, like, those cows, and I quote, constitutes an existential threat 
to the national security of the state of Israel. You need to get rid of them. And the movie goes about like the hilarious attempts of hiding those cows between the butchers and the houses. And in one scene, the, a cow is actually running and the, the Israeli soldiers are like running behind it and they corner it and they corner it and they're about to kill it. And you know what did the cow say? He didn't fall for this, cows don't speak. Yeah! <laughs> but you know, it actually said something. You know what did it say? It said, Hamas. But anyways, <laughs> but you see, this is the ideology of the Israeli uh, ruling party. They are not interested. They're not even allowing you to get your own cows. I mean, this, I want to discuss something that is very important because we have been talking about Israel being a democratic state, a secular state for all of its citizens, including its Arab residents, right? Yes. Wrong, 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 wrong. 2018, there was a resolution that was offered in the Knesset that say that Israel should be a state for all of its citizens. That seems basic, right? Mm -hmm. That resolution was not even allowed to be discussed. It's like, wait, why? And the, and the rebuttal was, Israel being the state of all of its citizens would threaten the character of the Jewish state. There is, uh, I have a friend of mine, his name is Andrew. He's Palestinian Christian, they do exist. And uh, his family comes from a town called Tarshiha. As many uh, Palestinian town, these would like, you know, being had another is a town called Kafar Bradin. Uh, it is a left-leaning town. They voted against Netanyahu by 70%. And they announced an auction to sell houses. And then they noticed that most of the, the, the applicants were Palestinians. They canceled the auction. Why? Because in each Jewish town, there is something called admission committee that can decide who can live in this town. Sounds like Jim Crow for me. And then they cancel it. And you know what they say in the reason? They say, Kafar Vradim welcomes all citizens of Israel despite the race, gender, or color. However, the, major, the majority of the town would like to preserve the character of the town as being Jewish, Zionist, and secular. How does this go together, secular and Jewish aside? You know, and this brings me to this picture. This is a very famous picture. You know, remember this picture? I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah. This, for the people who don't know, this from uh, San Augustin, Florida, 9, 18th of June, 1964. This was a white-only motel. And these are, these are black activists who wanted to defy the law and jump into the hotel. This guy is the owner of the hotel. His name is James Brooke. And he was pouring acid to scare them out of the hotel. His neighbor said that James Brooke was a victim because he was just following the law. And you know what James Brooke said? He said, it's not like I don't like black people. I just don't like them in my swimming pools. Now, if an official said that, wouldn't you say that this town has kind of a systemic racism? Yes. This, was, this quote was not said by James Brooke. It was said by Deton, the head of the Galilee municipality, when he said, I don't like Arabs. Mm. I don't just like them in my swimming pools. Mm. The town of Nazareth elite, 2010, the Arab Christians in the town, they requested to set up the Christmas tree next to another. This is the birth birthplace of Jesus. And you know what they said? We cannot have it because, because non-Jewish non symbols would offend Jewish residents. But this comes back to what you were saying at the start, which is about the hate on both sides. No, 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 I'm not talking about the hate. I'm talking no, no, ab I'm about this shining example that Israel won't tell the board that mm. we are like the Western world, we are secular. Mm. I don't know if you know this, but they're not just like secular, like, like Christians against their own Arab. I'm talking about like Arabs with Palestinian, with, with Israeli identity. Mm. I'm talking about them being even racist against their own people. 1950, Yemenis immigrants that came from Yemen and they were in the transition camp waiting to be transferred into Israel their kids were taken away from them and given to white Ashkenazi Jews and because they were not white enough. But Basim, what would happen if a Jewish person went to Gaza? How can, they, why would they go to Gaza? And exactly. Even I wouldn't go to Gaza. Exactly. That's yeah. my point. Yeah, so it, it's a dystopia. Who would, but like, I, but I'm just... So it's not just, it's, you know, you're, but, you're but, raising but, points about Israel, no, making no, out that somehow uh, they're as bad or worse no, than no, 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 but, what's but, going on no, there. No, but Hamas I'm, I'm, has no, ruled no, no, over uh, yes, the Palestinians but, but in the most what? oppressive way imaginable, I, absolutely, too. Absolutely, but you know what? Hamas never claimed that they are the only democracy in the, in the, in the right. region. They never claimed that they are secular. They never said that they adopt Western tragedy. And I they definitely, definitely, okay. they did not use that lie in order to cart or bomb a whole country. Okay. Now, here, I, mean, I, I, mean, I, I want to say one example, and I'm going to leave you. All right. Israel, you think that Israel will... Uh, by the way, the whole thing about the Yemeni children, you can find it in the New York Times. It's called, like, the, uh, the, the lost uh, right. uh, children of Israel. 
uh, the forgotten, uh, but even when Ethiopian people were immigrated to Israel, mm. Ethiopian Jews, women then reported, 2013, that's not like 50 years ago, mm. they reported that they were given against their consent and without their knowledge, contraceptive shots so they wouldn't reproduce because they are the wrong color. Israel is, n is a racist, apartheid country that is projecting this shiny example of secularism and democracy for the people so people can accept whatever they do because they look at Palestinians as lesser people. This is the whole point. This is the whole point. And I would like to quote Winston Churchill. He had a quote that say, I don't believe that we have made a great wrong to the red Indians of America or the black people of Australia because they were replaced by a higher race, a stronger race, a more world wisely race. This is, this is why Queen Rania is criticizing the West. This is why we here said like, where are your values? Because this is the crux of the problem. It's not Hamas, it's not Palestine. I want to it is people I'm looking at you. us as lesser human beings. Bassem, I, I'm, I don't dispute the characterization that a lot of the Israel administration look upon Palestinians as lesser people. Otherwise they wouldn't- They treat, even look at the, the Ethiopian like Jews and Yemeni Jews yeah, like I, less. I wouldn't dispute that. Um, I want to quote you mm -hmm. to, to end this. No, why would you end this? Don't end this. We'll be talking for two hours. Why not? At some point we're we have having to end an this. amazing time. We can do another interview. <laughs> well, this one goes big. I think this is a neat way to end it. He said, I actually believe there is a middle ground between everybody and they can meet. I direct my criticism for the extreme of each one of them. That was you, Bassam Yusuf. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. But I don't share your view there can never be peace. In this region. Mm -hmm. I, I think they can't be with the current leadership structures in both countries or both places, but I definitely think you've got to be optimistic about peace. You just need to find people I, that I, can, I, I that hope can forge so. it. I hope so, but the reason, listen, I refuse to come on, my, on your show when your producer first called me for the first interview mm -hmm. because I was scared. I was afraid. For me, that was a career suicide. Because, and and I have, I, I'm talking, this is even important because you are someone who's always talked about like against cancel culture, about like talking, speaking your mind out. Yeah. Speaking your mind yes. out. I left Egypt and I came to America, the land of the free, the home of the brave, but I didn't know that there was a fine print said that you cannot speak about Israel. Mm. I have issue with that. Israel is a foreign country. They're allies, good. But you we can give them speak about Israel. Many people lost their jobs. Even Bella Hadid, Bella Hadid, Bella Hadid, she's, she, she Bella, oh, by the way, Bella she hasn't lost her job. No, she, no, but she's talked about death threats. She's no. talking about like being silenced. Sure. And, by the way, Bella Hadid is with us. She's Palestinian. And you know who else? Gigi Hadid sisters. Yeah. I love the Hadid. They are with us. Yeah. Anyway, so. I know them both. They're very nice. But, but the thing is, if, if you are that high and you cannot speak about it, and it's, it's not about. It's well, you like, can. You just have to. Have, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You, you can. I but, mean, I've spoken out about these issues, and you get shot at, not literally, but metaphorically, all day long on social media. That shouldn't stop people from doing it. I'm just like wondering, as an American, you do. as an American, yeah. But like, I, I'm doing now because like the first interview went well. Right. I'm doing that because I want people to see that you can really speak up and not just get cancelled, but get rewarded. My career is going fine. Yeah. It's great because I want people to have the courage. Why are we, there should be no limits? I, I'm, I'm, I agree I, with I'm that. kind of like so, so confused as an American citizen. Why every American president? Candid, a presidential candidate have to go and kiss the hand and bend the knees to APAC. This is a lobby that works for a, a foreign country interest. Why don't we have like a lobby for Saudi Arabia? It is they're giving us more money. You know the great thing? You can say that here. Yes. You couldn't say it in Egypt. That's why you're living here. Yes. Uh, but again, a lot of people feel the burn, the heat whenever I, they yeah, come but down. If I was an American, I'd be going, oh, all right, Bassem. All right, we'll take the criticism because you can do that in this country. And I'm happy. When you criticize the government in your own country, yeah. they drove you out. Yes, and that's why I came to America, to play the white man's game, to actually to, to, to pass this acquired white privilege to my children. It's not, but the problem it's not just a country is, but of am, white people. But, but, but here's the problem. And the white man's game, uh, the, uh, the game in America is not a white man's game. It's a game that actually has a democracy and believes in freedom of speech. But there are speech. dog whistles everywhere. You're, you're not going to be put in jail for this interview. Or I can lose my career and I can lose jobs, and you know that. You, you could know in, that. In Egypt, you could. No, here you can In Egypt, too. they arrested here, you. Here you can And too. they threatened you. And 
and you would have probably ended up in prison here or dead. Here, a lot of people lost their jobs because they spoke up. It depends what they say. Of course, but again... If you're Kanye that, West and that, you spew anti-Semitic no, garbage, no, 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 you're going to lose, I will never, you're gonna I, lose I, what I will, you have. I will never adopt that kind of point right. of view. But the thing is, there is dog whistles everywhere. Uh. As I told you at the beginning, you cannot just say it's like anti-Semite, anti-Semite. Like, I mean, how, how come that the Palestinian flag is outlawed, by the way, it's outlawed in, in Israel. If you raise the Palestinian, you go to jail. And now they're saying like the Palestinian flag is a pro Hamas. No, it's not a pro Hamas. Mm. You know, I was, in, I was in doing a comedy show in Arizona and a guy was like wearing like a, a kofeya, like a scarf. And I took it, and, and I'm not like in hyperbole and like no. wearing symbols, but I just wanted to because like, why are we, uh, are we gonna uh, outlaw colors mm. and flags? That is, that, that, that is absurd. That is not right. I don't, I agree. I don't think you should, <laughs> but you should certainly outlaw Hamas. Regain. They're already outlaw. I right. mean, I'm not supporting them. Because they're a terror them. group. Yeah. I'm, uh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. But the people with the power, the people who supposedly have the... And you should, by the way, I will say this, you should be able to criticise the Israeli government without being accused of yes. being anti-Semitic. But I have in this interview repeatedly, and I'm not anti-Semitic. I just have a problem with all of what the Israeli government's been doing. I, and I have a problem with how any criticism to Israel by some circles mm. here are considered anti-Semite. This is not but some, fair. But, yeah, but a lot of the people doing it are actually anti-Semitic. Yes, but also a lot of Zionists mm. are against Israel that they hate the Jews. You know, the, it, 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 we've, it, we've discussed that. I want to yeah, end on a happy uh, but, but, but before that, I want to just like say two words about the media, which is, okay. uh, please. Sure. Mr. Zomlot, the Palestinian yeah. ambassador that you have, uh, this guy lost six members of his family mm. in an Israeli strike. Mm. And when he went on like some British news thing, he sat down and the, and, 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 and the, the, the lady told him, it's like, we are very sorry for a personal mm. I'm sure you don't condemn the killing of Israeli civilians. What? Mm. In the same moment. There's another girl like called Yara uh, Eid. She was like on Sky News. Mm. And, this, and the, the girl was like, Christ, like I lost 30 members of my family, 17 of them are children, I lost my best friend. And then, the, what do you think would happen if it was, forget about empathy, what, I think a, a lot of people, what about manners? Well, I think you have to start, I've said this repeatedly, you have to start from a place of humanity. You have yes. to look at what happened on October the 7th and feel utterly outraged and disgusted for the loss of human life. Yeah. And you also have to feel that for what's happening in Gaza to innocent people. But, but, but and if you don't, if you can't feel both in, for both sets of people, both sets of innocent people being killed, if you can't feel a sense of, of despair and horror over their deaths, you don't have any humanity. Believe me, Pierce, believe me, Pierce, it's not really about that. There's a deep sentiment in the Middle East, in Arabs, that the West do not look at us as equals. Well, you know what? So, so what I did, I went to the machines. Yeah. And I asked Chad GBT mm -hmm. simple questions. Mm -hmm. Do Israelis deserve to be free? And you know what they tell me? Yes. Israelis deserve the right like any other people. And then I asked the same question, do Palestinians deserve to be free? And you know what they tell me? It is complex. It is a sensitive issue. Well, it's not complex. It's not sensitive. The Palestinian people should be free. Yeah, but and even the machines well, have... finished, the and they should have exactly the same rights yes. to freedom and freedom of expression and the way to lead their lives and to water and to power and to yeah. internet that Israelis have and we have here in America and we have back in my home country of the UK. And I want that for the Palestinian people. We've got to end it there. Okay. Mainly because I've worked up a hell of a hunger right. in two hours of interview and you have brought your wife's okay. parlor. So the, tell me again how I do this. Okay, so... Take a piece of this. You, you, put it in you, the olive oil. Yes. Which is from the West Bank. Yeah, from the West Bank. And then a little bit of this. Yes. Like that? Yes, yes. This is like amazing oil coming from the olive tree. Uh, this has come from the West Bank. Mm. Since 1967, That's Israel cool. have actually uprooted 800,000 olive mm. trees, just to. That is absolutely delicious. I know. Please thank your wife for me. Thank you. Wish her all the best and, and her family, mm -hmm. particularly those who are uh, obviously in Gaza. It's been great to see you. Thank you so much. In America. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's keep talking. Yes. I honestly think the way through this is people keep talking. Yes. Good thank to you. see you. Thank you so much.